praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, in this episode, we are trying to understand the election theology of God's leadership. Especially in the life of Joshua. If you look into the Bible, there are so many leaders God has selected, anointed, appointed to lead the people of God. <clears throat> Moses had his successor, Joshua. Saint Paul had his successor, Timothy. Prophet Elijah had his successor, Elisha. Now can you imagine, the leader and a servant, somebody to take over after the leader has been out of the scene. And how does God select people? How does God appoint to people? Because today in the Catholic Church, today in different churches, in the ministry, people want to be leaders. People want to be in power. People want to be in the limelight. They want to be leaders. They want things at their hand and the followers behind them. But Bible today, with the life example of Joshua, teaches us how does God select a person? How does God appoint a person to be the leader? Because the true authority, the true power comes from God. That's why Jesus spoke to Pilate, you would have no power over me unless it, have, it is given from above. What a courage. Jesus is standing for trial before Pilate. And then Jesus is telling to Pilate, when he said, don't you know, I have the power to crucify you and even set you free. Don't you talk to me? And Jesus is saying, you would have no power over me unless it has been given from above. We need to understand every leadership, every power, every authority in the church, in the ministries, it simply comes from God. And specifically, we are looking into the life of Joshua. After Moses, how this man became powerful, a leader of the Israelites. To begin with, we need to understand, Joshua one day suddenly be did not become the leader. But this man began his life being a very humble servant of Moses. With a lot of humility, he walked with Moses. If we turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 24, uh, verse 13, if you read uh, about Joshua, Bible says two, th two important things. Moses set out with his assistant Joshua. Joshua was the assistant of Moses. And Moses went up to the mountain of God. Bible says, an assistant of Moses, to help out Moses, Joshua was with this man. And turn to um, Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp. But his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Two places, Bible says, Moses goes up to the mountain to speak to the Lord. 
and this his assistant, a faithful young man, Joshua, remained in the tent without leaving. Very faithful servant of Moses was Joshua. He did not become a leader simply overnight, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. And uh, we also read uh, such a faithful one. If you turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verses 7 and uh, chapter 4, verse 14, if you read, uh, my dear friends, we remember such a humble man that he was. Joshua 3, 7, we read, it is simply written, the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt to you in the sight of all the Israelites so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. God is telling here in 3.7, Joshua, today I will exalt you. I will lift you up before the entire people of Israelites so that they know that I am with you. Your God, the Lord is with you. It is a God selection. God is lifting up a person. God is appointing a person, Joshua, as a leader. And as you move on, uh, 4.14, if you read further, on that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all the people of Israel. And they stood in awe before him as they had stood in awe before Moses all the days of his life. What a beautiful one. When I read this, my dear friends, I really feel goosebumps running all over my body. What a beautiful thing. On that day, the Lord lifted up Joshua. The Lord lifted up Yehoshua, his servant, so that they stood in awe before him. The entire people of Israel, they stood before Joshua, in, in awe before him as they stood before Moses when God lifted up a person. My dear friends, unless God blesses you, unless God lifts you up, unless God appoints you, my dear friends, nobody can become a real servant, a real leader, a leader, a good guide for the people of God. On the opposite, my dear friends, pride, selfishness, I am great, I am someone, and I command obedience, I command respect, and I command over the people. My dear friends, remember, what the Bible says is, in, when you turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 8, if you read, what the Bible says is that, Pride goes before destruction, my dear friends. When we turn, 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the downfall. Joshua was a very humble servant of God. God lifted him up. But when people, if they become really pride, arrogant, haughty, Bible says it is one of the signs that you are heading to destruction. And if you turn to 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 5 and 6, if you read, God opposes the proud, but gives a grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the almighty hand of God, that he will lift you in the due time. What a, what a, what a, what a powerful sentence is this. What a powerful sentence is this. Humble yourself before the Lord. Make yourself simple before the Lord and wait patiently under the mighty hand of God. And Bible says, the Lord will lift you up in the right time. The Lord will lift you up in the right and due time for he opposes the proud heart. That's why the, the song of Blessed Virgin Mary, my dear friends, very beautifully, in the book of, the, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 51, He has shown the strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. 
he brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. My dear friends, being humble and having the grace or the virtue of humility is not simply by my words, is not simply by my tongue, but actually it is in spirit, it is in truth, it is in practice. My day to day, the way I speak, the way I exercise my responsibilities, the way I come across to people, the way I deal with the people, my dear friends, the way I, the way I am really being, really shows my dressing, my walking, my look, my interactions simply shows what I am because the internal disposition of a person is seen outside, my dear friends, in the way that we behave ourselves with the people. Therefore, a humble, a man of humility in the sight of God, God lifts up in the right time, in the due time. Because Joshua was appointed by God, not by Moses. Moses did not appoint Joshua. It is not the Moses' whims and fancies. Moses has not selected a leader after him. But remember, God appointed Joshua. God lifted up Joshua. God selected Joshua. And he became the successor of Moses. It is beautiful in the sight of God. It is beautiful in the sight of everyone. It is so beautiful in Bible. We shall take a short break and come back to see the blessing and the leadership of Joshua. Welcome back, my dear friends. We continue to see what are the personal qualities of Joshua that God selected this man to be a leader after the greatest prophet, that is Moses. The second thing is, my dear friends, Joshua was a man of faith. He was a man of faith. He had a strong belief and trust in the Lord who selected him, appointed him as a leader. If you turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 13, verse 25, and we also read 28. The report of the spies, which means when the people, before they entered into the promised land, each spy from each tribe, my dear friends, were selected and sent to the promised land to have a surveillance of the land, the people, the situation, and to come back with the report. And when you see here, from each tribe, 12 people were selected. One for each tribe. 12 people were sent, and when they came back, see the report that they have brought. Numbers 13, 25. At the end of the four, at the end of the 40 days, they returned from spying out of the land. And when we read in 28, if the people who lived in the land are strong, and the towns are fortified and very large, and besides we saw the descendants of Anak there. And they gave a completely, my dear friends, a report was brought to Joshua here. And when we read to the number 14, 6 to 9, my dear friends, what we say there is, and Joshua son of Nun, and Caleb's son of 
Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to the congregation of Israel, The land that we went through as spies is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, He will bring us into this land that He is going to give us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are no more than bread for us. My dear friends, 10 people have brought negative report about the land. They are so mighty, so they are so strong. They are like giants and we are like grasshoppers. The city is very fortified. We cannot fight. We cannot win. Absolutely a negative report. Ten people speak negative, wrong and discourage Joshua. My dear friends, two people, only two people brought very good positive messages after spying the land. Now you imagine my dear friends here, Joshua being a man of faith, Bible says he simply tore the clothes and said, you man of little faith, if God has planned, if God wants to give this land into our hands, after all they are nothing. The Lord wins the war, the Lord is our guide, the Lord is our strength and he leads the people forward. Ten people spoke a negative, only two people brought a positive report and Joshua trusted in the Lord, a man of very, very good faith in the Lord. The third quality is in Joshua, my dear friends, why God selected this man to be the leader after Moses, a great servant of God is, my dear friends, Joshua was a man who believed in God's word, not in human words. He simply believed, he simply trusted, my dear friends. When you turn to the book of Joshua, you know, if you see chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, beautiful, beautifully it is written here. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the laws that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. God told Joshua, after your servant Moses, I will be with you as I was with Moses. Be very careful to obey every commandment that my servant Moses has handed over to you and given to you. Be careful to obey every commandment. Do not turn to the right or do not turn to the left. And you will be successful wherever you go. My dear friends, the success behind uh, Joshua was that this man, this man really was very, very obedient uh, to the word that has been spoken to him. If you turn to my dear friends, uh, Second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, if you read, beautifully we see here, Second Timothy, chapter 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, reproof, corrections and training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to the Lord may be proficient, equipped for every good works. The complete Bible that is written is not the work of any human mind. It's not been simply written by any human authority and human agent. Bible says it has been inspired by God and men and women moved by the Holy Spirit have written from God this book Bible. Therefore, my dear friends, as a servant of God, Joshua, was a man of God who believed what God had promised him. He really went after the word that is given to him and this man was successful as his master, Moses himself. My dear friends, the fourth point that we see in the life of Joshua is he was a man of prayer, a very, very faithful servant and he was 
a man of prayer we read in the book of Joshua chapter 7 uh, verses 6 and 9 if you read my dear friends beautifully we read one thing here then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the ground on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening he and the elders of Israel and they put dust on their heads and verse 9 we read and the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and surrounds us and cut off your name from the earth then what will you do for your great name my dear friends Joshua trusted no one but this man simply could close his eyes and trust and believe in the Lord who selected him, who lifted him up, who appointed him as a leader after great servant of God Moses. And this man simply was a man of prayer. He used to fall down prostrate before the ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant, for the Lord was present there. And he used to cry before the Lord. Simply surrender himself before the Lord. What a man of prayer. What a dependability on the Lord, my dear friends. For Joshua being the servant of God, trusted the Lord and his strength was his prayer. And moving on finally, my dear friends. If you, uh, once again, if you look into the book of Joshua, what we see here is, he's a man who put God first in his life. He is a man who put God first priority. I know we all believe in God. We have different priorities. Many times God takes a second place or even a third. But Joshua is a man who put God in the first place. God is first and that's everything is second. The first commandment says, you shall have no other God before me. I am your God, you are the Lord. And love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength. If you turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, if you read, beautifully, two things are being mentioned here. Verse 34, if you read, my dear friends, what the word of God says is this. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, blessings and curses, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel. And the women and the little ones and the aliens who resided among them. For Joshua, God is number one. God is first. God, he gave, my dear friends, is the first priority in his all of his life. And this man exactly followed the commandments of the Lord. As a result, my dear friends, if you see, when God goes first, when God is given the first priority, when God is given the paramount importance in a person's life, remember, God walks first. God's presence goes before the person concerned. Therefore, my dear friends, wherever this man went, God gave him absolutely success. If you turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, verses 10, if you read, dear friends, a beautiful thing we see here. A curse is one who is slack in doing the work of the Lord, and a curse is one who keeps back the sword from bloodshed. What a beautiful thing here. In the work of the Lord, if anybody becomes sluggish, in the work of the Lord, if anybody becomes lazy, Bible says, cursed be the one. Therefore, in the service of God, in the leadership, my dear friends, remember, God is first, and He is the first priority, and that is the paramount importance of everything. That is a success behind this man, Joshua, the great leader after Moses. God appoints, God lifts, God calls, 
God strengthens, God leads and God walks from the friend giving success to everything that Joshua had done. Today, as we reflect this word, let us pray that all of us be humble and learn the leadership qualities from Joshua to be right in the sight of God. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for the way you have led and guided your servant Joshua with your word. We pray that all the leaders of the church, all the ministers of the church, learn this five qualities of Joshua and be a servant right before you and lead your people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a good day.